Because it's just how you and I go. Uh, news right off the bat that John Feliciano is back on a one-year deal. So the right guard hybrid of Feliciano and Burford remains in the room. What do you think of Feliciano coming back? It's obviously something the team wanted. Yeah, I mean, they like him. They like him. I know there's a lot of people going, well, why are you re-signing Feliciano when you have Spencer Burford on a rookie contract that has two more years left? And that is that uh, Feliciano is maybe a little bit more dependable. Um, and the Niners like what they got in the one year that they had him. Um, and, of course, the, you know the, the controversy came in the Super Bowl when um, Burford made a mistake. <clears throat> the rank-and-file NFL fan looked at the film and said, it's McKivitz, McKivitz. And people were just doing a rain dance on McKivitz's head. And Feliciano defended McKivitz and suggested Burford was at fault on the pivotal play. He later apologized and kind of uh, John Lynch said that he would speak uh, with Lake and Tomlinson also about a potential reunion. So that kind of clouded the picture a little bit. Um, and Tomlinson is out there still. He remains a free agent, but the Niners extend McKivitz and, um, you know, they've got at least five old linemen. If the game was today, they could play. So the game is not today. We are reporting that we are still very, very far away from week one of the NFL season, but to make the best possible season around the corner, there's still plenty of business to do when you need plenty of business to do. You need a little bit of money to do it with. And we also have the news right off the bat this morning here for everyone on wake up that George Kittle and Javon Hargrave have restructured, according to Dave Lombardi and Over the Cap and uh, All Precincts reporting, the 49ers converted over $7 million in base salary to bonuses with prorated cap hits over the next five years for Hargrave. I don't really have the details on Kittle's rework deal, but it's being reported that that's going to create about $10 million in space, which... When you looked at the cap space, the 49ers have had been diminishing. So Kittle just did him a solid right there, Larry. Well, and these were all expected, um, you know, I mean, even though Hargrave did not particularly play great football in that first year with the Niners, when they signed him to that massive deal, this was part of the master plan, which was to, you know, to have him renegotiate this year, create additional cap room. And for Kittle, it says that he's probably going to be a longtime guy with the Niners, right? I mean, there's people that are like, well, maybe they'll replace Kittle. Well, if you're restructuring a guy, you typically, those are your foundation pieces. Those are the guys that are going to be around for a while, typically. Not always, but typically. Uh, Fred Warner also is involved in a restructure. So Warner, Kittle, um, Hargrave making a big group of cash, and now they restructure and now allow the 49ers to you know, to have the the free agency room that they need to pursue whoever they want to pursue. There's talk they want Devondre Campbell. Um, there was talk last night they wanted Cameron Curl before he went back to the Rams. You know, to me, this is all kind of tied to that other story, which is out on Niners Nation right now, which is that Talanoa Hafanga is not guaranteed a starting spot this year. Um, Mike Silver has written it. I think many of us have known it for quite a while. I mean, he's coming off an ACL. Um, he was an all pro player in 2022 and a lot of people just assume he's going to get that starting spot, but the Niners kick tires on Justin Simmons, on Cameron Curl, on Julian Blackman. Afonga's coming off the torn ACL and, and he has a history of injuries dating back to his days at USC. So I think the 49ers would be very wise to get themselves fortified at free safety because you just don't know. You just don't well, know and Larry, strong and, safety for that. I matter. mean, look at who the general manager is. If there is one position where, you know, the Niners general manager has an awful lot of working knowledge, it's the position of safety. John Lynch, a Hall of Fame safety, obviously. So I think I'll I'll take his instincts there and his hunches there and apply, you know, more credence to it than maybe at any other position like who knows more about safety play than john lynch in the building he's a hall of fame safety it is a little surprising though to hear that they doubt to, I, I don't know should we interpret this as doubt of talanoa hufanga or is that a little bit too dramatic it's probably a little bit too it's dramatic. not a doubt of him it's a doubt of his body to be able to stay healthy and so they've worked out a number of safeties you know right now they've got brown 
coming off of a rookie year. They got George Odom. So they need depth. I mean, they absolutely have to have depth at that position. Um, and they don't have depth there. Um, they've got Taylor Hawkins, I guess, if you want to throw that out, Eric Harris. But those guys are more, you know, I don't want to just in any way put them down, but they're not necessarily starter caliber talents, at least not in my mind. Uh, maybe they are, but the, I don't think so. So you got Hafanga and you got Brown, and Hafanga's coming off an ACL, and didn't he suffer the ACL like halfway through the year or a little bit late in the year? Yeah. So you have the Niners out there looking at all potential safeties. Now, the Cameron Curl idea to me was really exciting, um, but he went to the Rams last night. The guy that I think makes a lot of sense for them is um, Mike Edwards, who was in Kansas City, I believe, and he's from the University of Kentucky. Um, and the reason for it is they've been going with these productive interceptor types. You know, for years, the Niners went with like big, fast, you know, physical. Can you run? Can you hit? Can you deliver? Can you play like a linebacker? Um, now they value ball skills and interception production, stuff like that. Tayshawn Gibson's still out there. Uh, Marcus May, um, you know, Blackman, as I mentioned before, Julian Blackman. But I think Mike Edwards is a name to kind of circle just from the standpoint of if he's still out there, um, you know, Edwards is, 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 is a productive interceptor and he has been going all the way back to university of Kentucky days. So, um, but they also interviewed a bunch of safeties uh, in the upcoming draft. So maybe they'll wait till the draft. So, you know, lots of questions for us to get into today. Um, first of all, let's just, just start with the big broad. We're about a week in. How do you think the 49ers are doing? I think that they've actually played free agency. Uh, the the only thing you could accuse them of is they've focused maybe too much on just one side of the ball. The counterpoint to that could be, well, that's where their focus needs to be to start this entire process. And they are focused on the defensive side of the ball. What do you think has been the biggest move the 49ers have made so far? Leonard Floyd. Um, Leonard Floyd is the best edge rusher they've had opposite Bosa since they've since they've been there. So, um, since you know, they since took the a night, hope and a holler on, on what D Ford, maybe. No, I think he's better than D Ford. Um, D Ford had an injury problems, chronic injury problems. Leonard Floyd is, is I think a little bit better than D Ford. So, I mean, I like Leonard Floyd. I, I, you know, and, and I think Floyd is an impact guy. I think he's better than chase young. I think he's better than D Ford. I think he's better than Randy Gregory. I think he's the best guy they've had opposite Bosa. So, I, I like him quite a bit. I like both those tackles too, by the way. I mean, Jordan Elliott is very underrated. Um, he hasn't burst onto the stage yet, but he's kind of a, a late bloomer. And then Malik Collins is just enormously strong. And if you watched him at Nebraska, uh, you could see that. And then he's, he's, a, he's a much better player right now than he was coming out of college. Out of college, he was just a bull just a big, strong They're guy powerful. who didn't, yeah, powerful, but no idea of really how to play. Now he's been in the league. Now he's got technique. Now he's got, you know, hands tied to feet and pass rush moves and, and counters and that kind of thing. So now he's a much better pass rusher than he was coming out of Nebraska. So I, I like it. I mean, you, you get rid of Armstead. Armstead had chronic um, plantar fasciitis. He had a meniscus that was not going to get any better. He was, you know, promising to be hurt. I would say five to six games a year. And now you, you've split up his money. Uh, you've got greater depth. You've got greater health. Um, I think that was a, a net positive. I really do. 